This is the Scrap Metal and Commodities Recycling Report by Ben Lee and Raleigh and Goldsboro Recycling, March 27, 2017. This is Ron Ostrowski reporting due to Greg Brown being in India. Last week, commodity prices and economic reports were mixed. U.S. steel production fell, but remains near a two-year high. Great news for the steel industry. Oil fell a dollar to $48 a barrel, nearly double the $27 of last year. $48 is below OPEC's target, so unless there are more cuts by OPEC and their partners, prices could decline. Higher oil prices remain a positive for U.S. drilling. Oil rigs spiked to 652, more than double about 14 months ago, and the highest level in about 18 months. Great news for jobs and steel use, but to keep things in perspective, it is down about 59% from two and a half years ago. Iron ore fell to $84.50 a metric ton, which while down in recent weeks, it remains more than double last year's low. Scrap ferrous prices remain steady. We continue to hear prices will be down next week. Imports of scrap metal substitutes and Nucor's DRI plant back online remain negatives for scrap prices. Hot dipped galvanized steel remains steady despite good demand. Scrap prices dropping could take finished steel prices down with it. From India, where Greg is traveling, last week there was a report that Indian finished steel prices are going to rise in April, after being up 70% in the last 13 months. Stainless 304 scrap was steady again at 37 cents a pound on no news. Copper fell 5 cents to $2.63 a pound on concern and timing of U.S. tax cuts, the pending $1 billion infrastructure bill, and the miss of the health care bill, which was a huge tax cut but the five-year chart shows we remain near about two-year highs. Copper inventories remain elevated, which could put downward pressure on prices. Aluminum rose a penny to 87 cents on good demand, especially in the automotive and non-residential construction markets. And the five-year chart shows aluminum prices remain near almost two-year highs. Aluminum inventories continue to fall, hitting new about nine-year lows, keeping upward pressure on prices. This could be offset by word of China's continued excess production. Sales of new family homes jumped 6.1% to a seasonably adjusted 592,000 last month, more than double the low of February 2011, which is great news. It also remains less than half of the high of July 2005, so there is possibly more good news ahead. Jobless claims rose to a 13-week high, remaining close to lows not seen since the 1970s meaning all continues to look okay for the U.S. economy. New orders for U.S. manufactured goods were up for the second month in a row, at a strong 1.7%. It was driven by civilian aircraft orders surging 47.6%, but frankly, while not shown here, non-defense orders excluding aircraft, which is a better economic measure, was down 0.1%. The Dow Jones average fell on concern and timing of U.S. tax cuts and the pending $1. billion infrastructure bill after the health care bill was pulled from a vote. Importantly, the market remains near historic highs. With Greg in India, the question is, could India cause a mini super commodity cycle in the years ahead? Here are a few data points. With India having as many people as China, this chart shows incomes are up 31% in the past three years. Also in 2016, passenger air miles flown were up 23.3% twice the increase of China. Could India cause a mini super commodity cycle? The answer is yes. As always, feel free to call or email Greg with any questions and we hope all have a safe and profitable week.